Jews have nothing to do with them, okay? Because they regarded them as alien, okay? Now, sorry. Jesus talked about the Torah and the, the, the Vim. And they came to Vim. There's older copies of the Samaritan Torah than the Jews. Oh my goodness. My friend, the Samaritans later on you. Who are the Dead Sea Scrolls? Hang on, don't jump around. The Samaritans were not Jewish. Okay? They were like the Phoenicians from Lebanon, from Syria. Different community, okay? Different ancestry. Now, Jesus came. When Jesus came, Jesus came for the house of Israel first. For the 12 tribes of Israel. I'm not Jewish, okay? So I don't qualify. However, Jesus told the 12 apostles, now that you have told the Jewish people in Israel, go and preach the gospel to every creature under heaven, starting in Jerusalem, and then go to Samaria, again, where Jesus had gone, and then to the upper ends of the world. That's why we're in England preaching the gospel, even though we're not Jewish, okay? But this job I'm doing was given to my Jewish friends first. It is their duty, their responsibility to preach the gospel of Messiah Yeshua. That's where the church came from, Israel, not England. The church came from Jerusalem because Yeshua, the Messiah, had come back from the dead. The 12 apostles, minus one, Judas Iscariot, who committed suicide, right? So they're 11, and they're all frightened of the Judean leaders because they've just seen them execute Jesus. So they're hiding, right? Now the women were brave, <laughs> braver than the men. They went to the tomb where Jesus was inside the tomb, dead body. The Roman soldiers guarding it, a rock about two tons at the front, and they're wondering, who will roll away the stone? Big stone. So when they get there, they're shocked. The stone has moved. Who did that? They question. And then they peek in and they see a young man inside. It's not Jesus, but it's an angel of the Lord. And he's telling them, Jesus whom you seek is alive. Go back and tell these apostles. So the women were the first I witnesses of the empty tomb. Jesus, dead body, is not in. He's risen. So they went back to the men. Did the men say, oh, this is great? No. They said, what have I been hallucinating on? The men had to go and check it out themselves. Amen. So Peter and Lazarus run to the tomb. And they found it exactly as the women had told them early on. And they're puzzled again. Later in the evening, Jesus Christ appears to all of them in one group, except for one man, Thomas. Okay? And he says, Peace I give to you. And now they cannot doubt any longer. And Jesus criticizes them. He said, You got a hard heart, man. The women told him risen from the dead. Why didn't you believe them? Probably going, whoops, sorry, sorry, master. Right? Right. Now, Jesus is the king of Israel. Jesus is the landlord of Israel. The whole land and the people. When he was crucified, it says, the king of the Jews. Okay? What's wrong with you? I can do what I want. I got freedom. Uh, make you notice things. Now the gospel comes from Israel, right? But the apostles were all Jewish and they died for Jesus. They were crucified upside down, some of them. Their heads were chopped off in Iran. Peter was executed upside down. Philip was flagged, his skin was taken off his body, right? So these people. The 12 minus Judas Iscariot became the foundation of the knowledge of the gospel which they transmitted. In India, right, India, Thomas went to India 
in the first century and preach the gospel to the Indians in India. And they became Christians in thousands. Today, if you go to India, every year, once every year, they have an anniversary called the Thomas India Anniversary. The Indians remember they became Christians first before Britain became Christians. Ah. No, this is history. Right. Uh -huh. So why did God do that? So that everybody knows God has got a favorites that way. Every nation under the sun has heard the gospel of Jesus. So the Indians today who worship cows, those four-footed animals, they're disobeying Thomas, who said there's one God in heaven, and one day going to stand under judgment, so obey the gospel. You British people, you do exact. Are you Irish? No, in Ireland, you got the same problem. You don't believe in God is serious. You go to church, and you have the mass. The mass is the despicable affront to God. Jesus was crucified once for all, never to be repeated. A priest does not have the power to turn bread into a physical body. That is junk, rubbish. Okay? It's not what Jewish people believe in, and it's not what Christians believe in. So why do they teach this? Apostolic succession is probably the reason, but I'm not Catholic, so I can't really say. Well, so what are you? Are you born again by the Spirit of God? No, I'm atheist. You're an atheist. So you're worse off than Roman Catholics. At least they're a little bit closer to the gospel where you're far away. But maybe it's a good thing you're far away because the gospel has been clearer to you than to them or trapped in it. In the Roman Catholic rubbish. They have apostolic success. I don't care whether they have apostolic nonsense. I care about where you're going to spend eternity. Heaven or hell? Where's your ticket? Where's your ticket? I got it right here. That's why I wrote this little book. Yeah, the Bible is my ticket. Actually, Jesus Christ is my ticket to heaven. So the Bible is basically put together by Constantine. No, oh my goodness. Constantine was a pagan, not a Christian. No, he did not. That's a, that's a so-called church tradition lie. It's not historical. Okay? So my friend. In the sign you have conquered, thing is not. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. This sign. What's that? <laughs> Jesus was killed on a tree. The cross was put in a tree. That's where the Lord Jesus died in a tree. A physical tree. Where is that? In Israel. No, in the Bible. It's on, read Hebrews, the whole book. It tells exactly what Jesus was crucified. He says he had to carry the, 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 a cross piece. And in the cross piece, a criminal, he was then hung on a living tree. And he says on Mount Olives. And I've been to the Mount of Olives. I checked it out. It's a real olives there. There are trees there. And he says the other thief was crucified on his left side. The other one is right. Jesus in the middle. Okay, simple. So he died on a cross beam that was fixed to a living tree. Why is that important? Because Adam sinned because of the fruit of the tree in the Garden of Eden. Whereas Jesus reversed all this by dying on another tree. Simple. What starts in Genesis ends up in the New Testament. So do you disagree that the current Bible in its current form was assembled under the auspices of Constantine? Constantine had nothing to do with the Bible, my friend. He was a fraud. So the treaty of Nicaea. Look, where, where is the political kingdom of Jesus on earth? Do you accept all the other Gospels like the Judas Gospel? No, it's not a Gospel. Well, they were originally. Why were they selected out? That's, do you see this? That's the Bible. The Old Testament has got 22 books from Genesis to Debarahim, Chronicles. The Roman Catholics, around about 350 AD, subdivided the books in the Old Testament so that now you have, instead of one book of Kings, 
now you have one, one Samuel, two Samuel, one Kings, two Kings. Right, four. Se never Why finish. Got the books Let me finish and understand something very important, right? Your Roman Catholic friends who are enemies of the Word of God subdivided the original order of the Scriptures. So when you come to the New Testament, there are five in the middle. Matthew, Levi, Mark, John, okay, Dr. Luke, Lazarus or John, and the book of Acts. These are the five Gospels, not Thomas, the whatever. Then you have Romans, oh sorry, James, one or two, three, John. One or two, my friend, you're agnostic, you're not an atheist. Ah, you've been found out. You want to study the agnostic books, not the Word of God. That's your problem. Stick to the Word of God alone. Forget the apocrypha nonsense. Tobit, right? Maccabees, and all these fake for Gospel of Thomas never wrote the Gospel. He preached and died for it in India. Okay? So you got 27. How many altogether? 49. Originally. Okay? What's the number 49? 7 times 7. Psalm number 12, verse 6. Thy word, O Lord, is purified as in a fire seven times. And when did it first appear in this format? When Jesus was around. 2,000 years ago. Yeah, the yes, the just like this. Uh, 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 uh. When was Revelation written? Uh, before AD 70, before the temple was destroyed. All the New Testament was written before that great building called the Jerusalem Temple was destroyed by General Titus, the Roman general. So do you reject the books of Saul of Tarsus? Oh my goodness. Paul wrote before the temple was destroyed. Okay? All the letters of Paul were written before AD 70. So what? Yeah, these are written by eyewitnesses. Paul never no, he's a liar. Yes, Paul met Jesus. Yes. You don't, you don't know that. He's, he's lying right. To you, Paul writes no, no, 1 here. Corinthians 15. I, Paul, am the least of the apostles because I persecuted the church. Right. And then he mentions Peter. Right. James. And he says, I am the least of all these. But thank God I am together with the apostles. Later on, Paul conferred with James, who was the titular leader of the early church in Jerusalem, for advice. Because James was from the house of David, the royal family. In Israel, there is what to call etiquette. In other words, if, for example, your name ends of Levi, that means you're from a tribe of Aaron. You're a priestly line. So when you open parliament in Israel, if anybody's got a name like Levi, they're the ones who say, read the Bible, read the Bible. And not to another Jew, no. Okay? Because the Levites are supposed to be custodians of God's word. Read it aloud. That's their job. The now, the now well, you're not listening, are you? Yeah, but the Now, James, the the James was a half-brother of the Lord Jesus. Because James was the physical, biological son of Joseph and Mary. Okay? So when Jesus left Mount of Olives, went back to heaven, responsibility for the church was on James. So when you read the book of Acts, you find all the apostles, they go and talk to James. Because now James is the head of the church. Actually, Jesus says, but he's given authority to James. Not Peter. Because the royal family, okay? The royal family in Israel went to David. Solomon, okay? So a Jew who wants to be a king must be a descendant of, in the line of David. If it's not, he's fake news. Okay? Simple. Because in Israel, God divided the government structure, right? Legislature, executive, judiciary. If you're a king, you cannot be a priest. 
If you're a priest, you cannot be a king. Separate. That's why we copy that in British Constitution, America as well. So you have the executive, president, and you have the uh, judiciary, the lawmaker, and the legislature. If you make, if one becomes more powerful, your country is in trouble. Okay? That's a blueprint from the Old Testament that God gave to uh, Samuel. And he says, teach this to the house of Israel. So it's been like that ever since. So James is the half-brother of the Lord Jesus. He is responsible for, in Israel to determine matters that affect the early church. So they knew what the Bible is. Okay, very simple. In fact, when Jesus came back from the dead, after his resurrection, he was teaching two apostles on the road to Emmaus. And the two apostles were sad. They were going, oh. And Jesus comes up to them. But they don't recognize him. And, they, and Jesus says, why your face is so sad? And they said, are you a stranger? Don't you know what just has happened? Jesus, whom we thought was the Messiah, had just been crucified. And then Jesus said to them, oh, you're very slow, aren't you? Don't you understand? Starting at Moses, the law, Torah, and then he says, the prophets, Nevim, and then he says, the Ketuvim. So the three sections of the Bible, he opens them up and says, Moses talked about me. Isaiah talked about me. Ruth talked about me. Okay? So Jesus is in the Old Testament and he's teaching to these two characters that don't know, like you. Okay? And that's the exact order of the Old Testament. And that's what we have today. When the New Testament came, it was done by the apostles. Peter, James, Paul, etc. Not me. Not, not Constantine. Because Constantine has got dirty hands. He's not godly. Like Peter, like James, like John. Okay, simple. Now, these apostles gave us the New Testament. But be careful, Thomas never said God to him to write a gospel. No. Okay? So when you somebody entices you to follow Thomas, forget that's the devil. That's the Bible. Simple. 49 books originally. Okay? Now we've divided them into 66 books. Which I think they should go back to the original order. Which is what Jesus talks about. And it makes it easy. How many days in a week? Seven. Right? When you sing a song, la 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 la, how many notes? Seven. Right? How many colors in the rainbow? Seven. Ah. So you see the number seven is about completion. A complete week, complete music that we sing, and so on. When the Jews of Israel went around Jericho, how many days? No, it doesn't. And then on the sixth day, how many days? How many times around Jericho? Seven times. And then bang! Job done! Walking. Seven is God's wonderful number in the Bible. It signifies completion. In the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, do you realize how many sevens they are? Seven mountains, seven kings, yeah, seven spirits, seven angels, so on and so on. It's emphasizing it's the last book for all of humanity. That's why it's got so many sevens all over it. Okay? And that's easy to remember. Not six, not eight, but seven. So the Bible is very clear from Genesis to Revelation. And it's all about Jesus Christ. He's the one who holds it together. Because he's the center, the alpha, the omega. The beginning and the end. Very simple, my friend. So when Jesus says you must be born again, it's a commandment from heaven. It says you cannot enter heaven. Because that's the ticket to heaven, born again. If you're not born again by the Spirit of God, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You cannot enter the kingdom of God. And that's a tragedy. Because what is life? The Bible says life is but a vapor. 
Come, gone. I'll be honest, how many people, your friends, from primary school do you still know today? <laughs> Maybe five, ten? Yeah, but how many do you still remember now that your friends still? Ah, but not primary school. Maybe one or two. Same thing with me. You can ask anybody here today. He said, how many friends do you still have from primary school? Maybe two. High school, maybe five. University, maybe one or two. Because everybody travels, they go everywhere. So you lose tact of your friends, of your relationships, right? But that's life. And yet, we are today, how old are we now? 20, 30, 40, whatever, right? We're getting older. So what things do we have are gonna remain? Very little, isn't it? When we die, we leave everything behind. That's why Jesus said, you must be born again to enter the kingdom of God. Okay, now to be born, it means that you must repent from your sins, acknowledge for a holy God, only wrath, judgment waits, and turn to him for mercy. And then God will put the Holy Spirit in you. And then you can cry out to God, Abba, Father. You see, ask, ask anybody around here, can you call God Abba, Father? Only the Christian can do that. Well, thanks for talking with me and uh, being with me. Let me give you this as a book. Thank you, sir. What's the name of your daughter? The one you don't know.